Uh, no, but seriously. Uh, we've gathered here today uh, to welcome the publication of the book, The Case Against Academic Boycotts of Israel, whose two editors are with us today, uh, luckily. Um, and uh, for, for the INSS view, there has been no more compelling critical time for this book to be published. While the tectonic plates beneath our feet in this region are moving, the anti-Israeli movement in campuses across the world, and especially in North America, is growing rapidly. Its targeted audience are those who will become the next generation of Israel's greatest ally, the US. This movement undermines any real effort to normalize the relationship between Israel and, and it, its neighbors, and most importantly, Israel and the Palestinians. We in the INSS believe that it is our duty to stand up against this threat and this challenge, very complex challenge. And this is the purpose of, of our conference today. The good news is that I think everyone in this room can agree that one of our lessons is that we realize that we all need to work together to address the threats against us. I wish to thank our distinguished guests who will be speaking today. I wish to thank the Israeli Action Network for partnering with us in creating this event and all the planning towards it. And of course, I thank you all, our dear guests, for joining us. I'm sure we'll have a fruitful and stimulating discussion. And now I wish to welcome Ms. Rebecca Kaspi, Senior Vice President, Director General of JFNA in Israel, to say her greeting words. Thank you. Hi, thanks for coming out in the rain today. So uh, let me start by uh, telling you a little bit about the Israel Action Network, which is a joint project of the Jewish Federations of North America and the Jewish Council for Public Affairs. And on behalf of our project, I'm pleased to welcome you here today to the session on the case against the academic boycotts of Israel. Several years ago, JFNA and JCPA partnered to establish the IAN, essentially our special forces to confront the campaign to delegitimize Israel by using the extraordinary power of some 500 local Jewish federations and communities, 15 national organizations, and 125 public affairs agencies in North America. And at that time, the situation was troubling, but still relatively stable. But our concerns are growing, and they're growing fast. We are particularly focused on university campuses where the future leaders of North America, and I think one might modestly say much of the world, are beginning their careers. Our campuses are becoming ever more hostile to Israel. This year, I'm just gonna give you two numbers. This year alone, we saw a doubling of anti-Israel activities on American campuses. In the period from August 1st to September 30th, 2013, there were 108 anti-Israel activities on 45 campuses. This year, in 2014, in exactly that same period of time, there were 202 anti-Israel activities on 94 campuses. 108, 202, 45 campuses, 94 campuses. And I think that's a very, very clear wake-up call. We're also seeing, as you know, a growing trend that seeks to use academic and professional associations as vehicles to influence the public dialogue about Israel's very existence and legitimacy. The courageous and thought-provoking work of professors Carrie Nelson and Gabe Bram and the many contributors to this important new book are already proving invaluable in combating those efforts. The case against academic boycotts of Israel is an authoritative and comprehensive resource serving essentially as a one-stop shop for detailed scholarly essays analyzing the boycott, divestment, and sanction movement against Israel. And since its release in November, this book has become, I think it's fair to say, a vital tool in the effort to counter such assaults on college campuses and with, within professional and academic associations. We are honored to partner with the INSS to provide all of you with an opportunity to hear from and engage with our frontline forces, the people who have on the ground real experience in fighting BDS. I want to extend our deepest thanks to all of today's distinguished speakers, and especially to the Institute for National Security Studies directed by Amos Yadlin and the terrific team of Einat Yogev and Pnina Sharvit Baruch, 
as well as my colleague, David Denker, from, here you'll, from whom you'll be hearing shortly. Thank you all for coming, and I wish you a productive and enjoyable afternoon.